already. There were quite a few initiatives, some of them more on the educational side, like the Sustainable Finance Weeks you've had, but also some concrete actions like the Green Fund and other more tangible outcomes. It doesn't mean the journey is over, a lot still has to be done to really fill all these promises now with content and start to deliver. I mean, the crisis was an excellent opportunity to observe what happens to firms in a special situation. And we were very relieved to see that the more sustainable firms not only lost less, but also recovered more quickly afterwards. But that's just a crisis situation. Of course, in the long term, the big picture is important. So we are interested in seeing if sustainable companies outperforms in the long term. And luckily, this is at least the case from what we can see. For instance, sustainable indices in the long term outperform their more traditional benchmarks over time. It's not the same in all the regions of the world. There is differences. But overall, I would say it's fair to say you don't have to give up returns to be more sustainable. Well, actually, since last time we spoke, we have done a poll among our clients to learn in a systematic way more about what they would like to see, where they would want to invest. And, uh, it was good to see that the large majority of our clients would like to invest more sustainably, plus also create some impact. However, not many are willing to give up returns to create some impact, which is a clear instruction for us as a service provider to create solutions and products that deliver comparable risk-adjusted returns, but create impact, tangible impact on top. There is of course a place for philanthropy, that's absolutely fine, but I think we should not mix it up with sustainability-oriented or impact-oriented investment strategies. Regulatory action is absolutely necessary to drive the capital in the direction we just mentioned. However, regulations such as the SFDR, the Disclosure Regulation, are not enough. What they do is they create transparency, which is important. They create comparability and make it a real choice for investors to put their money where they would like it to be. But we need more than that. We need to make sure that there is now also an incentive to act based on this new transparency, which means the boundary conditions have to be changed. For instance, external costs, such as negative impact on climate, have to be internalized, which then will drive indeed the capital for very logical reasons to the right place. The regulation we just talked about is certainly one because several parts of the European regulation will enter into force in 2022. So we will see the market react to that, which has a big connection to greenwashing allegation because it will be possible to compare the different solutions in the market based on that benchmark. Another trend or topic I would expect is more attention to social topics. We have seen during COVID that people are interested in these topics. They have seen that there are shortcomings when it comes to social issues such as diversity and inclusion, but also living wages like poverty and how that can be addressed. So I would expect more solutions which also address social topics. Then finally, an uh, area that is connected to climate change but a bit under research today is biodiversity. We do not have solutions available, I would say, to a large degree, but it is recognized that after climate change this will be the one big challenge for humanity.